there's more than one way to diagnose hemochromatosis, to treat hemochromatosis, and it varies between doctors and countries and all kinds of things. And you have to keep an open mind on that too. And one of the things I've learned from working in five different countries are all these different approaches. Now the most common way that hemochromatosis is diagnosed in Ontario is the person complains of fatigue and they go to the doctor and the doctor orders the ferritin thinking it's going to be low only to find that it's very high. And then the doctor would usually order the genetic test, the ferritin and the transferrin saturation and interpret all of them together. The most powerful thing that came out of the discovery of the gene immediately was the ability to diagnose hemochromatosis quickly, particularly within families. The typical hemochromatosis patient, they almost all have exactly the same genetic mutation. And that's not true with most genetic diseases. If you took like cystic fibrosis, there are hundreds of different genetic mutations that are close in the same region, but they're not exactly the same. But in hemochromatosis, most people have exactly the same genetic mutation. So that means when you're developing a genetic test, you only have to zero in on one little spot. And that's why the test is simple and widely available and relatively inexpensive. People say to me, oh, my doctor didn't want to do the genetic test because it's wasting money or it's too expensive. The gene test is cheaper than having a ferritin and transferrin saturation test. So don't buy that argument. It's not an expensive test. This is a slide here that illustrates what most of the people have who have these ferritins between 300 and 1,000. Obesity and fatty livers, number one. Daily alcohol consumption, number two. Inflammation somewhere else. Early hemochromatosis. And there's quite a few of them that we just don't know what they have. What about diabetes? Here we go. No difference in diabetes in our population study between homozygotes and the control group. So we've stopped saying that diabetes is a symptom of hemochromatosis because we can't prove it. So some of our people have diabetes. They usually have cirrhosis if they have diabetes. And diabetes in the aging population is epidemic. It's just rising at a tremendous rate. That's type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, usually associated with obesity. So it's very hard to say that's related to iron overload. This is the pigmentation of hemochromatosis. This is a very rare finding. This is the patient on the right. This is his wife on the left. So this is, this is not iron in the skin. This is melanin in the skin. So I had an interesting call from Calgary from a plastic surgeon. And he said he was attending a plastic surgery conference in California. And a stranger, presumably a plastic surgeon, beside him, a young woman, said to him, you know, I don't want to be nosy, but your skin color looks just like my grandfather who just died of hemochromatosis. So, you know, he came home and told his wife this. She was quite shocked. And he went on and had a blood test, and his ferritin was 8,000. So that was a very good pickup. He was a young man, 28 years old. So that was a very clever diagnosis. Now this was a surgeon that worked at my hospital. And uh, he presented with stiffness in his hands. And actually the radiologist diagnosed hemochromatosis based on these hand x-rays, which I think only happens in London. And he couldn't move his hands. And he was found to be a typical C282Y homozygote. He was a urologist. Apparently moving your fingers is fairly important when you're handling the crown jewels. <laughs> so this was very disabling for him and he had to give up surgical practice. So those people that tell you there's no sequelae of hemochromatosis, that's not correct. But there are many people that don't know they have it that are doing fine as well. And then there's a bunch of people who are undiagnosed. And if you take an older person that comes in and they've got a bit of diabetes and a bit of arthritis. Nobody teaches you in medical school to order iron tests. That's not where you go with that. It's just, just something that people never even think of. So those are the kind of people that get missed. 
And we've got this paradoxical situation now that hemochromatosis is overdiagnosed in people that don't have it and underdiagnosed in people that do have it. And there's a couple of reasons why that happens as well, based on the, the false positives of the test and the fact that most people who have hemochromatosis have normal liver tests. So many people think that this is predominantly a liver disease. It's a total body disease. And if you have normal liver tests, you don't get sent to liver clinic, so you never get diagnosed. So those are some of the reasons why we've got this paradoxical situation. 